Thanks, Lord, for the next few minutes we have to look into your word. May we find the encouragement that you have provided. May we walk with you in faith. In Christ's name, amen. We have a lot of people in our church who are really struggling with various and sundry issues. How do they, how do we make it through each day? Scriptures stress faith. Faith in trusting Christ alone for salvation. Faith in believing that the Lord is working out his plan. Doubt sees the obstacles. Faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darkest night. Faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take a step. Faith soars on high. Doubt questions who believes. Faith answers, I. Every day for us as believers is a challenge. It's a challenge for us not to focus on the, our reality that we are in right now, because there's two realities, as C.S. Lewis said. We have the reality of what we can see and touch and smell and taste and hear now, but that's not the only reality. The other reality is that Christ is in heaven, sitting at the right hand of the throne of God, and that he is working his plan. It's so easy for us to get focused on what we can see and feel and touch and not to lift our eyes up. As we lift our eyes up, that's where the comfort comes from. The comfort doesn't come from looking at the news or reading all the current events on our computers it only comes through looking up the lord consistently impresses upon my heart that walking by faith is his desire and what he wants as we have struggles in our own lives and as other people do we can remember god's word and believe it through faith the lord for example the Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and he saves the crushed in spirit. Whom in heaven have I but you? And on earth I have nothing I desire beside you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. You, Lord, are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Those who know the Lord trust him because he will not leave those who come to him. These are all different verses from the Psalms. That last one, especially those who know the Lord trust him because he will not leave any of those who come to him. The Lord's not going to leave us. He is right here. We have to say goodbye to so many things in life. We say goodbye to friends and loved ones when they pass away. We say goodbye to careers we have loved. We say goodbye to pets. We often have to say goodbye to our health. But guess what? We never have to say goodbye to the Lord because he walks with us through each step of the way. Faith is stressed throughout scriptures and especially in Hebrews. It reminds us that with Christ, we have the new. Christ is the absolute supremacy and sufficiency. He as the revealer and mediator of God's grace. Christ is God's full and final revelation. Christ is superior to the angels, the ancient prophets, to Moses. And Hebrews could be called the book of better things, since the two Greek words for better and superior occur over 15 times in the book. Hebrews says, that God's people must now look only to him, only to Christ, whose atoning death, resurrection, and ascension have opened the way into the true heavenly sanctuary of God's presence. We can know the Lord in the here and the now. 
We can experience him on a daily basis through his word. We have a friend who just wrote a book. It's just been published. And I went over there today to get a signed copy, two actually signed copies. And I'm very anxious to start the book because I know the author. When we communicate with the Lord, we should be excited because we know him. He is the author. He is the author and finisher of our salvation. How does all this wrap up with faith? Saul wraps up with faith because from Genesis, God has been leading his people through. He has led them through trials, tribulations, challenges. He has led them through doing the difficult. He has led women, children, men, older people, younger people, consistently led and been there for him, them, as they trust him. How is our trust quotient today? Are we trusting in the Lord? Are we remembering what it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1? For those who come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who genuinely seek him. Are we like those on the faith chapter who died in faith, it says in Hebrews eleven thirteen, They hadn't received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar and having acknowledge that they were strangers and exiles on this earth for people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland in other words this world is not our home we walk by faith into the next life into the next world in eternity with christ but as it is it continues in verse 18 they desire a better country that is a heavenly one Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. When our faith is dwindling, when we are asking and unable to figure out what the Lord is doing in our lives, it's okay. It's okay to ask, but we might not ever know. We can say it's okay to ask because Job's um, Job asked, he asked questions of the Lord, but ultimately he realized that his faith was in the Lord alone. He said, for I know that I shall see my God in heaven. Who am I in heaven but thee? There is none that I desire but thee. Whatever is going on with you, with me, with us this week, with our families, let us remember to put all of these situations and to visualize putting our concerns and our cares into the Lord's hands and by faith trusting that he is going to work it all out because he will. And we don't want to be ashamed when we meet him. We want to be able to say, Lord, I trusted you. I trusted you through the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I'm so thankful that the bad and the ugly is all gone now and that the good will be forever with you here in heaven. We have some, we have a few requests today. Some of them are very concerning. First of all, the big praise that we have is that Chuck got really good report. Chuck Reinhardt got a really good report back from the doctor after waiting for two to three weeks that this tumor was benign. And we're so thankful and grateful, but let's continue to keep Chuck and Lori Reinhardt in our prayers. Poor Mr. Garman, Bob Garman, has had a heart attack. He had a heart attack on Thursday and he's currently in the hospital. Please pray for this family. We know that a lot had just happened with them recently also. Tim Garman has a friend, Chris, from work who has a cyst on her brain. Um, we need to pray for Chris for healing and that she will be able to return home from hospital soon. We know that Tim understands those situations because he had them himself. 
one that's really concerning and heartbreaking is about Jack and Tina's daughter, Sarah. As you know, Sarah lives in Michigan with her family, and her daughter has just been diagnosed with a very rare and fast-growing cancer. Tina is flying out there uh, this week. Um, Sarah is scheduled to have a hysterectomy, and then they were going to go. They're going to make further plans on how to treat her. Please be in prayer for Sarah and her family, especially those two precious, as Pastor Jack used to see, say, redheaded children of hers, her sons. So we need to please remember that, and let's also remember to pray for all of the caregivers in the church who faithfully take care of their loved ones. We think of Bob Hoover, we think of Judy Dieterle, think of my mom. Um, we also need to pray for all those who are grieving. We have many in the church who have lost loved ones to continue to pray for Alice as she mourns the loss of her husband, Arnold, Chris and Don Harland as they, Wayne and, um, sorry, Don and Christine Harland as they lost their son, Wayne. We need to continue to pray for Tina as she grieves. We also need to pray for the ongoing request, such as Lori Steiger, who is having uh, quite the time in recovering from COVID. She really has lost her focus. Apparently, this is a side effect that can happen. She doesn't have the mental clarity she would like to have. So let's please pray for Lori. Also, Wayne Hausnacht, as he continues to recover from his knee surgery. Julie is an awesome church secretary, and she will be happy to email all these requests to you. And of course, we always need to be remembering Tim and Jenny as they lead the church, Pastor Tim, and thank the Lord for Mike's safe return from Uganda and for the planning and the preparation that he's doing for September. Um, I'm personally excited because he's asked if I'd help to go again and to work with some of the ladies. So let's please pray for that upcoming team that Lord willing will get to go to Uganda. In fact, we're having a meeting about that tonight. So let's um, have a quick prayer. Thanks again for joining for this time in the word. Most of all, as the Lord convicts our hearts, remember that if he's convicting us, we can be sure he's convicting our brothers and sisters in Christ about the same thing. Let's have a quick prayer. Lord, thanks we could look at your word. Thank you for how you have provided for us through so many trials and difficulties in our lives and through the blessings. Lord, we pray for each of us. We thank you that you left the example of the guy in the school in the Bible who said, Lord, please increase my faith. Lord, we all need to have our faith increased in you. We trust in you alone for salvation. That's just the beginning of our walk with you. We trust in you for everything, for every breath we take. Father, we bring before you all these requests. Lord, we have a church that is needy. And Lord, we thank you that you love to help us. We specifically ask for all the caregivers as they faithfully 24-7 minister to their loved ones who need you, who need their help. Please give them the strength to do so. Lord, we pray for all those who are grieving. Lord, even when we know that they're in heaven with you, we still miss them greatly on earth. We think of Betty Jo. We think of Tina. We think of Alice. Lord, we think of Don and Christine. Lord, so many people have lost loved ones. Lord, we also continue to ask you for those struggling with ongoing health issues. We pray for Lori as she's recovering from COVID. We pray for Wayne as he's recovering from knee surgery. Lord, and especially right now, we want to list, lift up to you, Sarah, we pray for Tina to have safety as she travels to Michigan. We pray for Colleen and the girls as they are here. Lord, this family's been through a lot. 
May their faith hold strong and fast and sure in these challenging days. We thank you for answers to prayer. We thank you so much that Chuck has a benign tumor. We thank you for Mike Mayosi making it back safely from Uganda and Kenya and Ethiopia. We thank you for this. And Lord, we ask for ongoing wisdom for Pastor Tim and for Jenny. Lord, we pray that our church would please you in our actions, in all that we do, Lord, corporately and individually. And Lord, we want to close by praying for Bill and Julie as they continue to lead the youth. Lord, these are hard days to be a teenager. We pray for them that you would give them great wisdom and pray for our teens to make wise, godly, and wholesome decisions. We commit all these things to you, Lord. We thank you we can come to you anytime. In Christ's name alone we pray. Amen. Once again, thank you so much for being here. And we look forward to fellowshipping together on Sunday. Except I'm going to be in New Jersey worshiping with my son, who's a pastor there. So thank you again, and God bless each of you. And please know that you're loved. You're loved by the leadership in the church, and you're appreciated. Once again, God bless you, and have a safe evening. Good night.